Hi, everybody. This is David Nevins for City Biz List, and we have a very special guest today, uh, Kevin Buggy. Kevin is the chairman of the board of the Western Golf Association. Uh, Kevin, welcome to our program. Thanks, David. It's great to be here with you today. Terrific. And so, Kevin, let's start with the fact that maybe not everybody knows what the Western Golf Association is. And, uh, and certainly your role as, as the chair of that organization. So let's start with telling our viewers a little bit about the Western Golf Association and maybe a little bit about yourself too and how, how one becomes chairman of the Western Golf Association. <laughs> okay, uh, well, f first the Western Golf Association was founded back in, uh, as far back as 1899. Uh, we conduct, the Western Golf Association itself conducts six tournaments, four amateur and two professional on a yearly basis. One of those tournaments being the BMW Championship, which is a PGA Tour event and part of the FedEx playoffs. The Western Golf Association also oversees the Evan Scholars Foundation, which is one of golf's largest charities, um, which provides young men and women college scholarships. Um, I've personally been involved with the Western Golf Association for over 25 years um, as a supporter, as a volunteer director, a member of the Board of Governors, and now as chairman. Um, so as chairman, you know, besides overseeing the governance of our organization, I'm there to support and lend guidance to the staff when needed. As a board together, we, we work together to ensure that our missions of championships and scholarships are fulfilled. Um, and then there's some fun parts to it, too. I get to attend a lot of different events and interviews for our kids as their finalists for the scholarship and get to go to the tournaments. But what's important about that is that we use those opportunities to communicate with our supporters and our um, volunteers and let them know where we stand the current state of the Western Golf Association and the ESF Evans Scholars Foundation. I think this communication is really important because it allows our constituents to stay connected to our mission. So as you can imagine, 2020 was a pretty difficult year mm -hmm. with COVID and everything else is going on, but we will still be able to maintain those priorities and our staff in particular did a great job of kind of guiding us through this uh, difficult time. I didn't grow up as a caddy. I wasn't an Evans scholar, uh, but golf's always been a really important part of my life ever since my dad introduced me to the game at a very young age. So to be able to, you know, be chairman of the organization has been a true honor and to be able to give back to them, to, you know, organization that's given so much to the game of golf and others has, has really been special. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm not going to ask what your handicap is, Kevin, because I don't want to embarrass <laughs> myself by sharing mine. Uh, which no <laughs> doubt is higher than, than yours. Um, Kevin, I, you mentioned the Evan, Evan Scholars Foundation, which is a big part, obviously, of the Western Golf Association. And as I've gotten to know uh, uh, to, and to learn about Evan Scholars over the last few years, it's um, just fascinating. And, and talk a little bit about what it means to be an Evan Scholar. And, and let me just set this up for our viewers, if you don't mind, that um, you take um, young caddies and, um, and you're, you're offering, of course, very significant college scholarships to them. But your view is that um, caddying is really training for life and for one's career. So, you know, take it from there, Kevin, and correct me if I'm wrong or, or add on to, uh, to that verbiage. No, you're 100% correct. And, uh, you know, I'll start kind of going back a little bit about the Evans Scholarship. But, you know, we believe that our scholarship, the Evans Scholarship, is one of the largest full tuition and housing scholarships in the country. We currently have 1,045 Evans Scholars in school at 19 different learning universities across the country. This year alone, we awarded a record 300 new scholarships. And that puts us on our path to reach our goal of 1,500 scholars in school by the year. 2030, which is also our 100-year anniversary. Um, you know, over the time, we've had over 11,500 caddies receive this scholarship uh, since its inception. It was founded by the Western Golf Association and famed amateur golfer Chick Evans. A uh, pretty good side story of that. Chick was one of two golfers ever to win the U.S. Amateur and the U.S. Open in the same year. And Chick really wanted to remain an amateur golfer, so him and his mother decided they were going to take their winnings from the U.S. Open and start a scholarship for caddies. Chick was a caddy growing up, and uh, he had a drop out of Northwestern University because he couldn't afford to go there. So back in 1930, our first two 
scholars attended the University of uh, uh, Northwestern University. So it was a really kind of a, a, a feel good moment there. But, um, you know, we're, we're privately funded. We have over 32,000 golfers, friends of the um, program and alumni from across the country that support us through our Park Club program. Uh, alumni alone give over $15 million a year to help support this. Wow. Uh, get, yeah, truly amazing. And it, it, it's a kind of the gift that keeps on giving. The kids get the scholarship. Hopefully they go on to be successful. And then they come back and, and um, you know, volunteer and become part of the program. So it, it's it's really, you know, a good feel part of the, the program. I've the had, uh, go ahead, Kevin, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say the scholarship itself has four different criteria to get it. Uh, one is a, um, you know, solid caddy record. You have to caddy, hopefully around two to three years worth. Uh, strong academics. We want to see leadership and, and uh, character. And of course, demonstrated financial needs. These kids have to, um, everybody has need these days with the cost of, education, but we really kind of focus on the ones that are, are truly in need. And we want to give them the opportunity to attend college because they probably wouldn't be able to attend otherwise. Uh, yeah. No, Kevin, as I've learned uh, over the last year or more about your organization, and I had the good fortune actually to sit in, uh, at least virtually, to sit in and watch some of the um, uh, Caddy Scholarship um, interviewees you know, I mean, they're all amazing. I, I don't know where you find these kids, but it, they truly um, have used caddying and um, and the 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 men and women for for whom they caddy, and and the 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 relationships and the mentorship and the teaching and the just the life lessons that come out of that um, are amazing and significant. Yeah, one hundred percent, and I agree with you. Like. We as an organization, we're also a caddy organization, and we believe that caddying is the best job for any young person out there. Um, you talked about those life lessons, but the hard work, the perseverance, patience, time and money management. But most importantly, it's the communication, right? Picture a 13 or 14-year-old young male or female, first job ever, and they have to go spend four hours on a golf course with an adult and act as partners and learn to communicate with that person. You talked about hearing those interviews and things like that. Every one of those kids, if, or you talk to a young caddy, they'll always remember their first day of caddying. And they'll always have somebody at the club that had made a direct impact to them in one way or another. And usually a member, somebody who's successful in life that has helped mentor he or she to, to go on to study a certain thing in college or, or to want to be successful itself. So caddying is, is, is just truly amazing. We can't you know, tell our audience enough. If you know anybody, the young person wants to caddy. We're all about youth caddings. We want to grow youth caddings, you know, across the, the country. Yeah. You know, Kevin, I, uh, my first job was, was at a caddy, was as a caddy, uh, a number of you at the time carrying two uh, heavy, big leather bags sure. in those days. I, I didn't <laughs> think it was the best job at that moment in time. <laughs> no, and it's hard early. It really is. And, it, and it's hard to tell the kid the first year that they might have to wait in a caddy yard for hours at a time and not get out. But if you, like you said, the perseverance aspect of it and the hard work, it really pays off, you know, over the years. And, uh, you know, you know, we really feel like that hard work and communication skills really help the kids um, in their future and sets them up for success when they do go to college. Um, you know, of our 1,045 scholars in school right now, they have an average GPA of 3.4, and we graduate them at a 95% rate in over four years. So it's truly amazing that they're taking opportunity, you know, taking advantage of the opportunities that we're awarding them. Um, so, and caddying is a big part of that. Tell our viewers what this uh, Evan Scholars House is all about. Yeah, so part of the, the formal agreement uh, with the University of Maryland, the Evan Scholars Foundation was, uh, you know, able to purchase a historic piece of property. Uh, for the local people right on the corner of, of Hopkins and College Avenue, right in, right in College Park. And this building will serve as the future home of the Kays Valley Evans Scholarship uh, House. This new chapter will be our 18th scholarship house. Um, we expect for the doors to open in 2024 after a few renovations. But in the meantime, I said we had three kids coming in this year and we'll, we'll continue to add kids. They'll live in the, in the same dorm together to get part of that community feel. And then hopefully by the year 2024, the house will be renovated 
and we'll we'll move in a, a full crop of scholars that will spend the rest of their time in college living in this house together. Um, the location that we happen to get, which we're really lucky to get right on College Avenue, is perfect. It's kind of a gateway access. It's really close right. to campus and shopping and, um, and, and public transportation. So I think it's really the ideal spot for these kids to be able to be in a great, tremendous living and learning environment. So we're really excited about it. Yeah, it's uh, just just quite an achievement, and uh, you know, I, I don't think uh, the we and everybody associated with the University of Maryland can thank you enough for the um, for the partnership, along with Caves Valley as well. So that's kind of a good segue, Kevin, to uh, when I said two announcements. Uh, the other, uh, many people in the Baltimore, Washington area already know about this, but. Um, you have a little golf tournament coming our way uh, at the end of August. Can you tell us about that? I can. Uh, let, let me just go back real quick, and, and I just, I'd just i be remiss if I didn't say something about why we're calling it the Case Valley Evan Scholarship House. Um, we, we, the lead commitment of over $2 million came from the Case Valley Golf Foundation to help purchase this house. And that lead commitment also went to us, helping us secure other donations that will help for the purchase and the renovation. So we're Truly thankful for Kays in many ways, um, but you know, especially for their generosity to help us purchase the house. Uh, and with that, we can segue into um, you know having the BMW Championship there, which again, you know, I keep saying that we're excited, but everything about it this coming summer is is just so thrilling for us. This will be the first time that the championship will be at Kays Valley, and it'll be the first time that the BMW Championship will be in the state of Maryland. Um, you know, so that. Um, along with us announcing, you know, being partners with Maryland is just is, is really thrilling as an organization. Yeah, I, I mean, I know that everybody's just uh, so excited about the tournament, about the new partnership with the, uh, the University of Maryland and um, Evan Scholars coming to the University of Maryland, the development of the house, uh, just uh, uh, all good things. And um and we're even, you know, excited about the fact that, you know, uh, Under Armour, of course, is, is yeah. headquartered in, in Maryland and uh, they have a big deal with Jordan Spieth. And fortunately, even Jordan Spieth's been playing uh, pretty well the last month. So he's definitely yeah, going to be yeah. in, in that tournament as well. Yeah, I think the great thing about the tournament will be a, a kind of a, 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 you know, bring everything together, all these announcements and celebrate it all at the BMW Championship and you know, it, what's great about the BMW championship is some of the, you know, the top 70 golfers in the world will be there and they'll be competing to be the top 30 to play in the tour championship. And that'll be determined that weekend. Um, you know, it was a little disappointing last year with COVID not to be able to have fans at Olympia fields, but you know, we really had a great finish there. I don't know if you guys remember, but John For sure. beat Dustin Johnson in a playoff hole, the dramatic 65 foot putt on the 18th hole. And we really, you know, think we can take that momentum with us from last year and bring it to Kay's value. And it's just going to be a great, great tournament. You know, a little bit about the BMW Championship. It actually debuted back in 1899. It was called the Western Open. Um, and it, it is the third largest PGA or oldest PGA Tour event on the tour, only behind the Open Championship and the U.S. Open. Um, so it's hard to argue with some of the history and the prestige of the event. We've had a great list of past champions, including newer ones as Roy McIlroy, John Rahm, Dustin Johnson, Justin Rose, and of course, Tiger Woods. So, um, but besides the fans getting to be able to see great golf, the one really major important thing about the championship this year is all the proceeds go back to the Evan Scholars Foundation. Since 2007, when we partnered with BMW, we've been able to raise over $35 million to, to send deserving caddies to school, and we can't thank BMW, obviously, enough for their support and their partnership. But we also expect this year to see a significant economic boost in the Baltimore and surrounding areas. You know, uh, knock on wood, um, we're estimating to have close to full attendance, over 100,000 people. And we think that might, you know, have an impact of close to $30 million. So uh, it's really going to be a great week for, for us, for the WGA, the Adam Scholars, for everybody at Caves, and hopefully for all the, you know, the fans of, of, well, golf fans from Baltimore and the surrounding areas. Well, Kevin, um, you've been an amazing uh, spokesperson uh, for for your organization, and obviously, um, an even even more amazing leader of that organization. And so, 
kudos to you and your work at Western Golf Association, the Evan Scholars Foundation, the BMW Golf Championship upcoming. I look forward to uh, meeting you there on the yes. links. Uh, we'll, I'll be outside the ropes, not inside the ropes, <laughs> but uh, um, it's uh, everybody in Maryland. I know is is so happy and proud and 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 so appreciative of this new relationship. Well, I, I, and I appreciate that. And um, you know, we've seen so much support already uh, from Kays Valley, from the from everybody at the University of Maryland, and even the local fans and businesses. Our ticket sales and hospitality sales are way ahead of the schedule. So, you know, we're thankful to everybody to there to be able to, to bring our brand and bring the championship to the state of Maryland and the Kays Valley. And, uh, you know, we're just so excited and looking forward to being there. Thank you so much, Kevin, uh, for your time today. And uh, we'll, see you, we'll see you in August for sure. Our guest today has been Kevin Buggy, the chairman of the Board of Governors of the Western Golf Association. And this is David Nevins for City Biz List. Thank you for joining us.